Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maike, today I'm going to do a get ready with me with all of the items or at least some of the items that I am currently using in my shop my stash in the month of June. So I'm about to be shopping my stash for the month of July and I always like to round off the month with a little update where I use some of the products that I have been trying out all month to let you know how I feel about them. A lot of these I have already reviewed up on my blog now as well, so if you want to see more in-depth reviews with swatches and like befores and afters, then I would definitely recommend checking out my blog. If you just scroll down, most of these items will then pop up. Um, and some of them I'm about to review, either in video or blog format. So let's just get started with putting all of this makeup on my face and let's just chat while we're doing this. I'm not sure yet what we're gonna be talking about, but let's talk about makeup, let's talk about how I'm doing, all that jazz. So uh, I am going to be going in first with the Catrice Glow and Care Primer with Super Fruit Complex. And this is the one that I've been using the most all month. I tried the um, Blooming, Bloom Baby Bloom, that's what it was called, uh, primer all but oil by essence at the start of the month and it was a nice product but I feel I'm going to I want to save that for uh, the winter time because I think it's even better then when my skin is a lot drier right now my skin doesn't need that much to really make it work so I'm going to be putting a drop of that onto my brush and this brush you guys it is starting to fall apart you probably can't see it but it has it's losing hairs every single day so I'm I'm gonna hopefully be able to get the most out of this brush for the time being it's an elf brush by the way so i think i can buy a replacement of it very soon but because i like to apply primer with a brush i think it is just inherently part of <laughs> that sort of method of application because primers tend to be a bit sticky and then that stickiness gets sort of attached to the brush hairs and then i feel that these brushes just don't last as long because of the products I'm using them with. Um, so that's a bit of a shame, but oh well. Um, I like the brush still, and it works quite well. So as long as it's not falling apart completely, I can still use it. I, it doesn't leave any hairs on my face as I'm using the product, you could say. Uh, oh, I've got an itch. So let's just talk about that as well. So how I'm doing. Uh, hay fever is going through the roof at the moment. So if I also look a little bit tired, it is A, the busiest time of the year for me. I'm a teacher, if you didn't know. So right before summer break is like when we, <sighs> that's just crazy busy. So uh, it's been a, a hefty couple of weeks, you could say. And then hay fever on top of it, uh, everything else that's going on in the world, I mean, it's just been a bit much. Uh, I'm going to be priming my eyelids, by the, way, by the way, with the Essence You Better Work eyeshadow primer. I used it in my full phase of Essence thinking it was almost gone. It is definitely almost gone, but it's like one of those things where I'm like, okay, I might still have a few more weeks left. But yeah, this one I think in July I will definitely be able to use up. So yeah, it's just, everything has just been a bit stressful because of everything that's just going on, not just in my personal life, but also in the world. I mean, I think that everything that's been put on the map again this month is just so important for us to just all be in tune with. And um, yeah, I mean, I my channel is about makeup, so I'm not a social commentary channel, so I also don't feel comfortable talking a lot about it, especially because I feel I have no right to say anything about it at all. Um, which is why actually I never really talk about these things online and that's also something that I said in the preface to a video that I did at the start of the month where I talked about some like black owned beauty brands and like songs and books that I would recommend if you would like to know a bit more you could say um, and for me like when it comes to like issues that I find important I discuss those with people in my real life. I do not discuss that with people online. I just don't like to. I don't use Facebook for that. I'm not someone who goes and comments on, I don't know, news articles. It's just something I don't do. And um, I'm always afraid like it's going to be taken the wrong way. Like I have a long history, people, of just being online and interacting with individuals in you know, that I don't know through an online space. 
and I kind of know <laughs> how things will go. And that's why I just try to stay away from online discussions as much as I can, because it's just never, ever going to bring you anything. And that's another thing that I really felt why I wanted to make that video in the end, is because there's almost this idea that if you don't do it online, it also doesn't happen or something. That's really how I felt. Um, but I think that the biggest change you can possibly make is in your own life and not on the internet, you could say. So um, we are all responsible for making safe spaces around ourselves, I think. And if we can make sure that we create that for as many other people as possible, then that's what I want to advocate for. But just know that just because it doesn't happen in my videos doesn't mean that I don't do it in my real life. What I just put on my face is the Catrice Clean ID Hydro BB Cream. Uh, this is in the shade Light. Some people were asking me about, you know, seeing this going on after I did my video last Thursday about my favorite base products for hot summer weather. And this is one of them. And this is what it looks like. It's very natural looking. And that's one of the things I really like about this BB Cream. For concealer, I'm going to be using the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. This is the naturally radiant version and I have mine in the shade Fair. This has been discontinued and I'm gutted because this is much better than the sculpting concealer that they also do if you have dry skin. So the multi, what's it called, multi-purpose sculpting concealer uh, that they now do is nice if you don't have very dry skin. This was just a lot more hydrating and that's why I prefer it. The only issue that I had is <laughs> that at some point during the month I was unscrewing the lid and then this golden ring actually came loose from the packaging. So now I'm just afraid it's going to leak all over the place. So I think I will not be using it again this month. Just see how the packaging will go. I just wanted to also let you guys know that just because you don't see me do certain things in my videos doesn't mean that I necessarily subscribe to certain things or whatever. Uh, I, it, at the end of the day, this channel and also my other channel have very focused topics, namely makeup and books, and I try to stick to those realms as much as possible. I hardly ever veer off of that, so please don't assume things just because I don't show it in my videos. For powder, look at that, nice bit of pan. Um, this is the Colourpop No Filter Finishing Powder in the shade Fair. Um, this is okay, it's a bit too heavy for like normal, I would say. So it's been perfect for this kind of weather that we're having. Uh, it's been very hot, it's been very sort of like true, true summer. I mean, right now I'm filming this and all of a sudden it's a, a, a bit more spring-like, but we had, well, almost a heat wave the other day. So um, yeah, it's been very warm and then this powder does work on me, but if you have very dry skin, this may not be the best one for you because it is a little bit drying, I find. Let's do brows, Essence, Super Last Brow Pomade Pencil. Still going strong. I think I do make progress every month, but I think I still have like two or three months worth of product in this. And the Glossier Boy Brow is still going strong as well. This one is in the shade, just blonde. And this one is also blonde. And now we are going to be moving on to blush, bronzer, bronzer highlight. I'm going to go in with bronzer first. This is the ColourPop uh, Coconut Beach Bronzer. Uh, this is okay. It's not my favorite bronzer ever. Uh, I think it's also uh, a, a nice one again for right now for the summertime, but I think it's a bit too dark for other moments in the year. But, you know, it's a nice one. It doesn't come with a whole lot of product. Uh, ColourPop products usually don't. Um, this is still seven grams, so that's a little bit better than the face powder I use that only has five grams of product. So for a bronzer, this is pretty okay, but it's not something to write home about. This is not like my all-time favorite bronzer all of a sudden. So um, this is all right. Uh, as you can see, it gives me a bit more color, um, ties everything in together a little bit better, but no more than that. 
And then we're moving on to this. This is the Jeffree Star uh, Supreme Frost Highlighter in Hypothermia. And I wanted to use it in this video to show you the effect because this is one of those highlighters that I think if you spot it in store, you're like, what am I supposed to do with it? I had that feeling for a long time as well, but I was very much intrigued by it. And then I saw the Ladies of Beauty News destroy this in a video. And they also said like for fair skinned people, this can be a really pretty highlight. And I have to agree with them. It gives a very glass like finish and I just wanted to showcase that. But this product is also my instigator for starting about, you know, the drama that just, just does, doesn't seem to go away. Do I think Jeffree Star is problematic? Yes. Do I buy his product? Yes. Why? Because I feel the makeup is not the man. And if he comes out with something that I think is unique and will add something to my collection, I may consider picking something up. But what people are doing right now as well with the whole Shane Dawson situation, everybody's talking about this and I'm like, I don't know these people in real life, so why am I supposed to say anything about it? Why should I decide to not buy something just because of how someone portrays themselves online? And I'm like, you know, this is, is that really who he is? I'm not sure. I don't think anybody knows except for Jeffrey himself. And like for a very long time, I held off of buying Jeffree Star products. Like. I didn't buy any Jeffree Star until last year when the Blue, Br Blue Blood palette came out. I, let me see, there we go, there is the highlight, do you see that? And his line simply has a couple of unique products that I don't think a lot of other brands do, and that's why in the end I caved and bought some of his product, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but very for, for a very long time I was like, no, I'm not gonna buy any Jeffree Star, it's problematic and also like some of the other things that are going on in the beauty community. I'm going in with the Jouer Rose Gold Blush Duo and I'm just going to take a bit of both shades and just swirl it onto my cheeks. Yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, Jeffree Star Shane Dawson. Like if if the product is something that I, I'm interested in and it's something I can get, then I will buy it. And that doesn't mean that, you know, for instance, the whole Jaclyn Hill thing, her line doesn't interest me. I don't feel it is unique. I don't feel that it adds anything. And then of course there was this whole drama about those lipsticks that were released last year. And like, there are just a lot of things that I don't engage with that people say is the beauty community. Like a lot of these larger YouTubers, I don't even watch them. I don't know what's going on in their lives. All of a sudden people start talking about it all together and I'm like, Oh wait, something happened again? I'm gonna be priming my eyes again, this time with my MAC Paint Pot in Painterly and a little The Body Shop Cream colored eyeshadow because I like to double prime to make sure that everything stays put and that I have a canvas because my eyes are quite deep set. So I have a very deep natural crease. If I skip this step, my eyeshadow will crease. And then I would like to do something because a lot of people saw me wearing this makeup look a couple uh, videos ago and people were like, ooh, that's such a stunning look. So I thought I could do it right now in today's video and recreate that look for you. And that is a look I did with the Kaleidos Futurism 5 Electro Turquoise eyeshadow palette. And I have been trying out these little Kaleidos palettes this month. I put them in my shop, my stash. And I thought I could show you the look that I did with this one because that's one that everybody liked. Um, let me just tell you what I did and then we can like talk a little bit more about the whole situation in a minute. So I have this really bright orange. That's what I'm going to put in the crease actually. And then I'm going to deepen it up with that dark gray. I'm going to be using, uh, what did I do again? Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to be putting uh, these two shades on the lower lash line. This bright blue is gonna go all over the lid and this is gonna go in the inner corner and that way we will have used all six shades because you know what I'm like if I have shades in a palette, I wanna use every single one. So let me zoom you in so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. All right, so for the eyeshadow, let's take my MAC 217 and that bright orangey shade uh, because I think that will work really well. That's, at least that's what I did when I created that look that you saw me wear in the uh, video that I did, I think last week. Um, so, so far, uh, these Kaleidos palettes, I really enjoy. I really especially like them 
for their more unique color stories and the fact that they put colors together that you may not put together yourself very quickly, but they still make for very easy to use wearable looks. I do have to say though that as much as that people have been raving about these, I don't really think they are that special from a formula perspective. Um, so I'm going to be doing a um, 10 palette eyeshadow review again in July and then I will update you on how I feel about all five of them. But with each of these I had issues with some shades just skipping, like in the end I can make them blend and it works fine and it looks okay but some of the shades I found to be a bit patchy and just not the best. So I think I have better or equally good eyeshadow in my makeup collection, but that's just uh, how I feel. I'm going to be taking this up a little higher in a minute when I apply the darker shade um, because it will probably partly disappear when I apply the dark brown, but yeah. When it comes to, you know, how I feel about all of the drama that's going on and everybody's sort of having their opinions ready to go and I feel like, you know, I'm of the opinion that I cannot have an opinion about what's going on because I wasn't there. <laughs> so that that's pretty much all I can say about this entire situation is just that, you know, I cannot speak out on things that I don't know much about and I also feel for instance in the whole like you know the Black Lives Matters and the racism discussion that's you know come up like I don't know what that is like so I don't know what it feels like to to be discriminated against just because I have a different skin color the only thing I can subscribe to and why I can have empathy for um, people who are going through such a situation is because I have experienced sexism in the past. I mean, in several situations. So it's one of those things where I'm like, I can see where you're coming from. And I think that change is needed. And I've definitely uh, made the video that I did because I wanted to break the silence. And as I mentioned, I very often stay away from important issues online because I feel that it never really ends in a good place. And I just felt like right now, especially because the stand seems to be like not saying anything is, you know, not being racist isn't enough. Um, you need to, you know, advocate and try and do your thing, you, you know, play your part in trying to resolve the issue. And that was sort of my attempt there. Um, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, I'm not saying that I've never said anything or did anything to see this is what I mean. It goes patchy, it skips, I feel like this bit is much darker than there. I mean I, I can fix it, it will look okay in a minute, but I just felt that that these darker shades and the Kaleidos palettes I wasn't too happy with. I'm sorry, I got distracted there by the eyeshadow. So I was saying that I made that video because I fully understand that we need to speak up and that just not, not being racist isn't enough and that's sort of where I came from when I made that video. And of course, like I was so sure that some people were going to take that video and then, you know, call me racist the first chance they get because sure, I could now vouch to never use products again that aren't inclusive or just like with the whole Jeffree Star thing, like cancel the brand and say like, oh, I will never use a brand like that anymore in my life. And I'm like, you know what? I get it. I get that that's what you would like me to do. But I hope you also understand that for someone who lives in a country where all of the brands I showed you in my Black Lives Matter video, I cannot even regularly buy in a store, that it's going to be very difficult for me to make such a claim and still make beauty content. Like, I, I am only one person and I feel that if we all do our bit, and this is why I'm saying that most of what I do doesn't happen on my channel. I make videos because I like to have fun doing videos. That's it. That's why I come on here. That's why I make videos. But I'm not here to advocate for something. Not because I don't subscribe to it, but that's not the purpose of my channel. So 
I then also want to, you know, sort of put out there that even though, you know, I want to support the cause, I want to do my bit, I want to do my thing, but just know that I feel it is far more effective if I do that in my real life and not online. And I think that that's sort of where things can also be taken in the wrong direction. And I just felt that I wanted to make that video to hopefully show people. And that was another issue that I took with some of the other creators. Like some people I saw like, oh yeah, here's a list of like black owned makeup brands that you can buy from. And I'm like, well, have you ever bought anything from those brands yourself? So I wanted to make a video where I talked about stuff that I already have. Like, for me, this is not something that I just started doing because all of a sudden this is put on the agenda and all of a sudden I'm now considering, you know, are brands inclusive, inclusive or not? In fact, all of my makeup reviews, if I feel that something doesn't work for me, I will always point out who it might work for instead if it's someone with a darker skin tone or maybe whether it's someone with normal or oily skin rather than my dry skin. I have been trying for years to put that message out there. And also in my videos, I've, I've talked about Catrice and Essence not being great when it comes to their shade ranges. But does that mean that I should boycott those brands? I mean, I always find that that's always very, like a very fine line to like say like, oh no, I'm not going to use this anymore because, well, yeah, I don't think it's a, like, sure, like you do you. And I think that in our capitalist system, money can definitely talk. So I think there is merit in that. But I also feel that where you can really make a difference is in how you vote and what you do in your real life. I mean, I'm a teacher, so I know that the biggest impact I can possibly have is in my classroom. And I have discussed these kind of things with students in my classroom. If, in case you didn't know, I teach English. And at some point, just to give you an example, and this was years ago, this was back when I taught secondary school, so this is more than a decade ago. And one of the students was using the N-word in class. And this was a class filled with white kids, right? So I told her, like, you should not use that term. And she was like, but why not? All of my favorite rappers are using this word. What's wrong with it? And she just had no clue. So I did an entire class, like, I was like, okay, guys, anybody know why you can't use the N-word? And nobody knew, so I very quickly changed that class into a mini-lecture on racism and how, you know, terms can be hurtful and how language can be used to hurt other people. And, uh, like, I told them about Jim Crow laws and about, like, everything that's associated with that word and what it brings back, like what it brings to mind for some people. And then she was like, yeah, but why then all the, why do all of these rappers who are black themselves, why are they using this terminology? And I was like, well, there is also, and, and that's of course a little bit strange, but there is this sort of like, if you're part of the in crowd, you can use it in a different way. But if you're a white person and you use the N word, don't even go there. And she was like, wow, I never thought it could be that complex. You know, in my classroom, that's where I feel I can really make the difference. And that's what I would like to continue to do for, you know, whenever it's these kind of things come up and I will. All right, I'm gonna be using some setting spray. And this is the uh, Elf Dewy Setting Mist, not the Makeup uh, Revolution one. I just put it in a different bottle because I like the spritzer better. And this is what the eye look now looks like. I'm going to be applying some mascara real quickly and then I'll be right back. All right, not sure where my camera cut off, but I was doing mascara with these two guys. This is the uh, Essence False Lash Lash Princess Full False Lash Effect Mascara in the green tube, which is my favorite Essence mascara, and the Catrice Glamendol Waterproof Mascara. So this is the look that I was wearing in uh, very recent videos, and now I'm going to be using my lipstick. 
Um, and this is again the Too Faced Sex on the Peach lipstick because it just goes with this look really well, I found. So that's that lipstick done and that's a little bit of my rant done. I hope you didn't mind it too much in this video and I hope you enjoyed watching this video and how I put the entire look together. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week. So I hope to see my next video. Stay safe everyone. Bye bye.